I am revisiting the parametric modeling of a hyperboloid that I had presented recently. The method consisted in sampling some points to draw a hyperbola that would be revolved. Today I propose to model the hyperboloid by sweeping a simple reference line around a circle. This approach is simpler, and also much more accurate. I have kept the construction plane only from the previous modeling. This construction plane is rotated by 90 degrees. I have drawn a sketch on it which contains the rotation circle for the sweep. A second sketch on the right plane contains the reference line. The hyperboloid is obtained using the sweep feature in surface mode. The line is the profile, the circle is the path. The resulting body is a surface. This surface is closed at both ends using the patch feature. The stitch feature allows the whole thing to become a single solid. The first hyperboloid of our study is finalized. I proceed in the same way for the second one. I remove everything that allowed its modeling except the construction plane. This plane is rotated by 90 degrees. Here I create the sketch containing the circle for the sweep. The second sketch on the right plane contains the reference line. I run the sweep feature, the reference line of the second sketch as the profile, the circle of the first sketch as the path. I close the resulting surface by using the patch feature twice. The stitch feature allows us to obtain the final solid, i.e. our second hyperboloid. The two hyperboloids are now visible in their relative positions. Their contact lines are overlapping into one. I make some arbitrary changes to the parameters. The effects are similar to those of my previous study. I invite you to refer to it if you wish. Playing with the parameters has become a habit for me. All this is conclusive. Let's apply this study to model a hyperboloidal gear again. The starting point is the same as the previous time, namely the screw gear project. I begin by creating a component. A first sketch will contain the contact line of the gear. A second sketch contains the gear axis. That's all there is to it. I construct two planes, one at each end of the gear axis. I will create a sketch on each of these planes. Each sketch contains a line connecting a point on the axis with a point on the contact line, a circle centered on the axis, and a point on the intersection between the line and the circle. Here is the point. I repeat the same steps on the sketch of the other plane. A line connecting the other point of the axis with the other point of the contact line. A circle centered on the axis. A point on the intersection between this line and this circle. 
it is these two points of intersection that interest us. I will connect them by a straight line in a final sketch. This will be the reference line for modeling the hyperboloid. Note that the contact line and the reference line are distinct. Indeed, the former is at the same level as the pitch circle of the gear, the latter at its root circle level. Hurry, the next steps. I model using the sweep feature of the surface mode. The reference line is the profile, a circle from a sketch of the screw gear is the path. I continue with the patch feature, on one side, then on the other. That's good, I see you're following. Let's continue. The hole is stitched into a hyperboloidal solid body. Extrusion of the central hole. It's pretty trivial now. Do we agree? It remains to make the gear teeth. After seeing my presentations, I think you are beginning to know the way. However, I will do it differently. Instead of using the sweep feature twice, I will use it only once, and then symmetrize the resulting tooth half using the circular pattern feature. Be careful not to confuse the path and the guide rail of the sweep feature. The tooth is completed. The rest is similar to my previous gear presentations. I make a fillet at the root of the tooth and make a circular pattern of the hole. Done. I rotate the wheel for a good meshing. In the overlaid view you see the correct way to proceed. During the recording I didn't proceed in the recommended way. Fusion 360's move copy feature is loaded with possibilities, unfortunately not all of them are parametric. Avoid combining translation and rotation, but make sure to perform each operation with the dedicated move type. In our case we had to use the rotation type alone. Here we go, the modeling of the second wheel of this revisited hyperboloidal gear is underway. I let you concentrate on it. The contact line of the gear at the pitch circle level. The hyperboloid axis. The two planes at the ends of the axis. A first end point of the reference line at the root circle level. The other end point of the reference line at the root circle level. The reference line itself at the root circle level. We switch back to surface mode to extrude the different faces that make up the hyperboloid. One of the interesting aspects of surface mode is the ability to model with simplified sketches. Indeed, the surface mode features do not need sketches containing closed profiles, unlike the solid mode features. This simplification allowed us to model the hyperboloid from simple lines and circles. Their use is safe and accurate. 
Remember, in the first approach to modeling the hyperboloid, I sampled a few points from a mathematical expression that I then connected with a spline. This line was supposed to be a sufficiently faithful approximation to represent a hyperbola, but it was ultimately too unreliable. Fusion 360 had been put through the ringer to fix the gear teeth when I started to change the parameter values. I finished the second gear, I rotate it for proper meshing with the first, and then comes the fun part of playing with the parameter values. I remind you that when using the move copy feature, it is recommended to select the move type corresponding to the desired operation instead of leaving the default one which is not parametric. I am inserting a picture from the previous presentation showing the missing teeth after a big change in the contact line value. I ascribe this problem to the inaccuracy of modeling the hyperboloid using the sampled points. Here comes the moment. Let's play with the parameters. I'm going to focus on one parameter in particular, the contact line. First remove those profile shift coefficient values, then a first modification of the contact line. I now extend the contact line significantly. Bingo! All the teeth are there, none are missing. Problem solved. It's nice to be young, though. Thank you for your attention.